What? <laughs> Wait, you got a message that said that the police were checking your emojis? It was a commercial on the radio. Weird. We haven't had privacy since 9-11, but go ahead. Well, I mean, it's escalated, you know, yeah. TikTok yep. and all things. But yeah. um, but I was like, I'm, I'm pretty sure you still need, you know, a court order and some shit to, like, pull somebody's records. Also, I mean, it would be creepy if, like, an ex-boyfriend said that to you. Like, it was great. Yeah, it was creepy, and it was like this guy's voice that you really wanted to listen into. That oh, sounded no. like smart and charming and trusting. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, they used a sexy voice to tell you that they're spying on you. That's and it weird. wasn't overly sexy. It was like it was like, ooh, is that you know? But um, okay. So I'm glad I didn't have to say this in a text message because uh, I. I'm still watching the Inspector Lindley mysteries, uh-huh. um, and uh, this last episode, like, he figured out that his mom's best friend, who sort of, like, had the hots for him, was actually, um, like, the, the money laundering crime boss that took over after her husband died. Cool. And then he went, and she was like, well, yeah, he was... He was the one that was doing all the things, and so, you know, everybody was just happy to help me take over when he died, and he was like, you're such a terrible person, and you, you, you're just, uh, taking away all the things from all the people, and climbing on the backs of blah, 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 uh-huh. and I don't really know that much about money laundering, except that usually... If your money is dirty, it's from, it's huh. a, like, a, it's acquired from a crime, right? Right, right, right. Um, and then there's, like, some crimes that are worth feeling bad about, and then there's, like, if I were to steal from Jeff Bezos, like, I would feel like a boss, right? Yeah. Um, and so she was like, no, I'm okay. This is a great retirement. And, uh, you know, I just had to, like, you know, kill a few people because of them like, figuring out too much or whatever. But, um, you know, she was like, well, I didn't even order that kill. And they were overzealous. And, like, it was just very unfortunate. And, you know, like, but I just thought, you know, I'm so glad you're my sister because if I become like a crime boss that's living large, which means you're living large. Yeah. Like, we're just going to do a good job of it. We're not going to get overly greedy. We're going to, like, be all Robin Hood about it, and you're not going to damn me for it. No. You know? I would never judge you for um, murdering people or stealing from people that deserve it. I know. And that's why I just wanted to tell you I love you. I love you, too. Yeah. Our unique moral compass makes us delightful sociopaths. Uh, actually, I would like to amend that because my eyes have been woke this year. Cool. And, cool. and last year and the year before, yeah. and especially this year, uh-huh. as I as I see like how I would say forty three percent of the uh, people in that are higher up in the government that are making huge governmental decisions are like pedophiles, yep. like serial pedophiles, hmm. and um, and how like everybody who's high up is like fucking just so disgusting and dirty and like you know I've been woke and so um, I don't yeah I just feel like. Um, if anything, not playing by their rules is a crime. And, like, of course, if we don't play the way they play, we're 
we're never going to get anywhere, you know? Yep. In order to own anything in this country, you got to steal it. And the reason that, like, all those rules are in place is to keep us from, you know, keep the levels separate. Like, yep. they get to be on top because they're criminals, and we get to be on the bottom because we're not. And so I, I feel like our definition of criminal is really fucked up. And, that, um, that is a really good call, and I would like to tell you, um, you all accidentally almost quoted one of my favorite Black Lives Matter leaders. I want to say her name is Tamar Maori. Yeah. Um, and she said, you guys are all worried about us stealing from these, from these different businesses. She's like, you looted us first. You, like, she's like, you have been stealing our labor. You have been stealing... Um, our money, you have been stealing our businesses. She's like, we don't own nothing. She's like, we don't own nothing because every time we build something up, you take it away from us. And it was just like, I watched that speech over and over again. It was so beautiful and it was so true. Like, like the minuscule looting that's been happening in these protests is tiny compared to the amount that the rich have been stealing from the poor for the last 50 years, at least, of this country. Jeff Bezos and his company, like, goes to small town, Midwest places and tells everyone that they're going to make, you know, more than they've ever made in that town when they come up here, which is not a living wage. And so they come up here and they're slave labor at Amazon because they can't pay rent and buy food and they don't know what to do. Yeah. And they know. and they think that if they have their internship here and all the other things, then they're going to be like Microsoft retirees, you know? But there is no such thing as Microsoft retirees anymore. Nobody gets to retire anymore because every time there's a crisis in this country, the rich use it as an opportunity to transfer wealth from the poor to themselves, you know? Like... Yeah. They just this keep... conversation got a little too real for my state. <laughs> okay, like, I'm sorry. I'm pain. sorry. You're right. We started with Inspector Lindley, and and you're I right. I was just calling to tell you I love you because you don't care if I become a crime boss and that you'll be like by my side and not judge me or rat me out no matter what, and just be like, of course I'm going to share in the like success and not judge you and be grateful and keep my mouth shut and like enjoy my better life and what the fuck ever right yeah honestly you as a crime boss is kind of how i always imagined us um in our elderly years oh i didn't know i wish you told me so i could have started working on it well there's still time we've got at least another 30 years before i mean you know depending on this year if we can live through this year we can live through the next 30 Right? Like, but yeah, you can totally start working on being a crime boss. And actually, I would argue that in the last 15 years in Seattle, you have been sort of crime bossy. You have done some boss shit and some crime shit, and it's been awesome. Well, thanks, Sarah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go. Okay. I have to go pain manage. Yeah. Manage my pain. Hey, um... Do you think part of turning 40 is that you just don't give a shit about other people or need them anymore, and you're not sure that, like, dick is really a thing that's worth all the trouble? That's not just 40. That's every woman I've talked to this year. Okay. That's, it's a combination of never being able to leave our house, one, two, no longer having access to all the beauty bullshit that we used to assume we needed in order to get men. Like shaving and plucking and waxing and hair dues and so that's two and then three I think the fact that we're all staying inside and just videoing each other from our beds also takes some of the pressure off of being a woman and trying to get laid and then in the last five years it turns out that every boy famous boy you've ever had a crush on um, is a, a fucking rapist yeah. Yeah, or a racist. I mean, either racism or rapes. Like, either way, like... They're all garbage. Yes, they're all garbage. Like, every... Like, all of the, like, strong, powerful people that we were attracted to, were they were just gonna, like, 
rape us. Into domestic violence. Yes. And like try to dismantle us. Yes. Yes. The nicest thing you can say about somebody who's been powerful in Hollywood for the last 20 years is that they only were sexual harassy. Like, honestly, that this is not about turning 40, Joy. This is about the last five years of our lives. This is about um, the mask coming off of every disgusting man in America and the world. This is about us discovering that we have been empowering rapey racists for the last 50 years, 100 years, 400 years, since the start of the country started. I just have to have some, like, huh, before I try to give anyone any power in my life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I totally get it. I mean, and you're not the only one. Every person I know who owns a vagina has uh, has given up on, on sex, has given up on on enjoying sex, has given up on being attracted to people, has given up on hoping that men aren't, any man you meet is not ultimately garbage, you know? Honestly, the only good man is a man that can never touch you and therefore never fuck with you, as far as I'm concerned. The only safe sex going forward is computer sex. Well, honey, pandemic is your place. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're lucky that we're all kind of in a hold pattern right now because, honestly, between the pandemic and the smoke, everybody has to stay inside. So you're either stuck with a person you've been fucking for the last couple of years or you're you're blissfully alone. Yeah, it was weird, like, when it started to rain last night, then it's like all these sirens came around. Like, everyone was like, oh, I forgot, I could be committing crime right now. <laughs> It's raining. It's my window. (laughs) Okay, I'm going to go. Okay, I'll talk to you in the future. Bye-bye. In the past. In the past. Oh, it's so trippy. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye. I mean, bye. This has been Shit Talk with Sisters.